Hey folks, welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith. My name is Angie, and on this channel, we explore the intersection between AI technologies and writing fiction. Today, we're going to continue where we left off at the end of our last video, where we discussed Camp NaNoWriMo. If you haven't already watched that video, I recommend checking it out before watching this one. And, as usual, I've created a handy Notion document to accompany us. The URL will be in the video description below. Let's get started. First thing, I made a couple changes to the Notion template. I just wanted to show you really quick. So for anyone who has downloaded it already, I went ahead and added zeros to the sing single digit numbers for the dates. So 010203, and then this caused it to make sure that it was going in the correct direction on the chart. I noticed it was all over the place on the chart. I also added this little spot right here. So you can open this up and you can actually see the chart base settings that I have set up. If you've already got everything set up, you're good to go. But for anyone who is going to add the tracker, you should be able to use it with the new changes. At the end of the last video, I put up a poll on our Discord group, the Byte Writers Guild, asking you guys what you wanted me to work on for Camp NaNoWriMo. The science fiction romance serial is what won. I already actually have a science fiction romance underway, but unfortunately it's a novella series and it doesn't have a long enough story arc for me to turn that into a serial. I could have multiple mail order alien brides and then turn that into a serial, but I was doing like the whole insta love thing and I didn't think it would work how I wanted it to. So we're back to the drawing board as far as what science fiction romance serial I wanted to do. So I was thinking, what projects have I done that would be good for this? And so I, I realized that my The Last Haven series that I created for NaNoWriMo in 2023 would actually be perfect. The way that I plotted it, I actually plotted 10 books. That would be more than enough content for a serial. And it, it has a big enough world and enough characters and that it could be used for that. So what I did was I went into ChatGPT, which is where I plotted it. And I wanted to see what I did. The first thing that I noticed when I was looking back through that is that I told it that I wanted it to get some ideas from existing media and to use that for inspiration. So the ones that I had put in there for The Last Haven were Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets and Jupiter Ascending because they're two of my favorite movies. And I'd also watched them recently because I knew I was getting ready to do a science fiction story and I wanted some inspiration. So I went ahead and I actually put that into my prompt. The second thing that I did is that I put categories that I wanted to have the book be able to be placed in inside of the Amazon catalog. So I used Katie Spy and I went in and uh, I looked at probably a dozen different categories to see what would be the best fit as far as where there was enough selling potential and also where I could easily rank. And since it was a young adult's book, I actually ended up picking uh, young adult action and adventure, young adult apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic, and young adult dystopian. Now, young adult science fiction mystery would have been a place where I could easily rank. So I went ahead and I threw that one in there as well. If you have not used Katie Spy before, or if you're not you know, familiar with the writing to market that I have talked about in the past. I actually have two videos here that you can watch. The first one uses some paid tools, and then the second one is with free tools. Okay. And then the last thing that I did was after I had given it this context of I want inspiration from these two movies and I want to have it be in these categories, then I asked it to give me five premises where. It fit within the categories and also gave me a female protagonist who is an INTP. Now we can look through here briefly. So I have this set up 
instead of looking at the original chat, ChatGPT is making some changes to their system. And because I had this set up in plugin mode, because at that time you had to be in plugin mode to have access to the 30K words. Now it's got all this weird stuff on it when you're actually in there. It wants you to start a new chat every time. And I'm like, I don't want to start a new chat. I just want to look at my old chat. Okay, here's where I told it about Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. And then we come down here. I asked it if I, if we should start with a concept or if we should start with a character. So do we want to be a you know plot-based or do we want to go character-based? And it did its own thing. And I, I decided to take back control of the conversation. And then I added in, here's the categories. And then down here, I asked it for the the premise ideas. And if you look right here, number two is The Last Haven. And it gives us just a very basic premise. And then from here, we I actually changed the character's name and we started world building. So this is actually what's going to happen in the next video. I did things differently for the Camp NaNoWriMo project. And I want to tell you why I did it differently. So ChatGPT has been, what's the word I want to say? Unreliable of late. I've had a really hard time anytime I have gone to go and use it. It either hasn't worked, it's been down, it's giving errors. And so I had already paid for Claude Pro for the month because I was using it to test some nonfiction prompts. And so I was like, okay, why don't I just, instead of trying to fight with ChatGPT or go into Novel Crafter and pay to use ChatGPT. So I ran nine different prompts from Miracles, Romance in the Digital Age, and Thriller Prompt, 50 Niche Templates. And let me show you what. So here's one that I did. So this is actually the cyberpunk thriller series. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to do something that was like cyberpunk or if I wanted to do something that was space opera. But I did a bunch of other ones too, just to see if I had, if there was something that captured my attention. So this is the really long prompt that is in a uh, JSON format. And so it gave me a really eh answer. One thing I do want to point out, let me scroll back up here. I know that we, I've run in a uh, novel crafter, some of these prompts and it hasn't worked. And I actually talked to Marigold about this. And she, should, uh, she suggested that we add this little section here and I've actually put it in the notes Fill in all bracketed inf information with real-time story content. So she said that if you put this in here, it should definitely work inside of Novel Crafter. So that is from the author herself. So I went ahead. I ran it. It wasn't that great. Eh, whatever. So I got to the end. It's just really long. Hold on. There we go. I got to the end and I was like, you know, what did I learn from what I did last time? I, I learned that I needed to add popular media, but I also wanted to add a couple other things. So I said, cool, using some of the information above, give me five serialized fiction premises for a story with the following requirements. Female main character, INTP, a reverse harem subplot. So this one was a thriller, so I gave it a reverse harem subplot. The other ones were all romances, so I just gave them a reverse here. And more characters means more complicated, which is perfect for serialized fiction. So here I had the elements, popular media, including Altered Carbon and Westworld. And apparently I spelled Altered Carbon wrong, but it knew what I was talking about. And so it gave me five of these. Now, after I went through all of these prompts. I went in and, you know, some of them I did Altered Carbon and Westworld. Other ones I did other shows. I think I did back over here. I did Valerian. I did Jupiter Ascending. I did Firefly. And I think on one I even did uh, The Fifth Element. But I went through and then I copied all of the synopsis over to a Google Doc. And I deleted any of the ones that I hated. If they were terrible, I just trashed them. If I didn't want to write them, I threw them in the garbage. So then I took all of the synopsis and I put it into Claude. 
And I gave it the following prompt. I said, from this list of synopsis, pick the best three. So it did. There was one that I really liked, but I wasn't really quite ready to say, yeah, that's it. There are some things about it I wasn't thrilled about. And so I decided to go about it a different way. Okay, so here we go. So I'm planning to write a science fiction romance serial with the following element, a female main character, INTP, reverse harem of alien suitors, royalty, and a series arc that can go at least three seasons. Now I'm trying to decide whether I want to do cyberpunk or space opera for the story. Please give me five concepts for each. For the cyberpunk, include elements of popular media such as Westworld and Altered Carbon. For space opera, include elements from Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets and Jupiter Ascending. Ensure these premises are all original, non-published, and non-produced concepts. I only want original content. I will say in one of my examples, I tried to put in Dune and I tried to put in Star Wars and it tried to put the IP from those stories into my story and that was not going to work. So it gave me the five cyberpunk concepts. It gave me the five space opera concepts. And then I asked it, what is the best one from each category and why? So then it went ahead and gave me that as well. So each one and then it gave me its reasoning. And then I went over back to the last thing that I did. I grabbed the one that I really liked and I grabbed another one that I liked as well. It didn't make the cut at the end, but I really liked it. So I basically I had one of each. I had a cyberpunk one and I had a space opera one. And I said, here are the two premises. Of all the premises, which one is the best? And it gave me the one I originally chose. Um, and it, then it, got, it told me why that I should choose that one. So Claude ch chose the one that I wanted, but I still wasn't quite happy with it. There were some things in it that I didn't quite like. And so I decided I wanted to mix it with a different one. So let's go to that chat and look at it. I really should have named these better. Okay. So of these, I like number one, the Quantum Queen, the best. But I'm not completely sold on the quest to uncover ancient artifacts part. I cannot stand that whole quest for the Holy Grail thing. It's not me. So here is another premise that I like that is similar. Please give me three new synopsis that combine the best parts of these two synopsis and doesn't include the search for artifacts. So I'm telling it to look at the one for the Quantum Queen. Look at this other one that I provided. Make sure you get rid of the ancient artifacts and mix them up. So then it gave me three new ones. I didn't want to do five again. I was done trying to make decisions at that point. So then I said, of the three premises, which one is the best and why? And it picked the one that I did, the Cosmic Insurgents. And then it told me why I should pick that one. So that is, oops. That is where we are now. So we've got our final premise for now. Area, an INTP princess and gifted energy manipulator, narrowly escapes a bloody coup that claims the lives of her royal family. Seeking refuge in the shadows of the galactic underworld, she encounters a diverse group of outcasts and mercenaries, each harboring unique abilities and hidden agendas. Among them, a roguish starship captain, a mysterious technopath, a deadly alien warrior, Forge, and a breakable bond with Arya. As she unravels the sinister conspiracy behind the coup, Arya must harness her powers, unite her reverse harem to mount an insurgence against the corrupt forces that seek to control the galaxy, ultimately reclaiming her throne and ushering in a new era of justice and equality. That was a mouthful. And it's very vague. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing from here on out is we're going to be building the world. We're going to be crafting the characters. We're going to be making the outline. And then we're going to start building the series codex. Because the codex that we're going to build is actually going to be for all of our episodes. So we can put it in there, basically everything we know. And then as we start writing each season, we can make some slight tweaks to make sure that we're not giving away all the goods 
ahead of time. But that is for another time. One thing I did want to mention is had I done this in Novel Crafter. So remember, I was in Claude Pro because I'd already paid for it. And I didn't want to go spend another $20 on Opus using it in Novel Crafter. So I would have just used Sonnet in Novel Crafter if I were doing this inside of Novel Crafter. I have a lot of friends who have been plotting with Claude. They've been very happy with it. And most of them are honestly either just using Sonnet inside of Novel Crafter or they're using the Claude chat and they're using Sonnet there because it's free. Okay, so I think that's all for this video. As I mentioned, in our next video, we're going to be talking about taking this premise inside of Novel Crafter, inside the chat. We're going to develop the story. We're going to make it so much less vague, probably make a lot of changes. Her name is not going to be Aria anymore. Aria is actually one of my pen names, so it's got to go. It's also one of those super AI names. So we're going to build a serial worthy world. We are going to craft characters that leap off the page. We're going to begin outlining what I'll be drafting during Camp NaNoWriMo, as well as having an idea of where the story is going to go after that. And then we're going to build that series codex. I also have another video coming out, and that's going to be on where to publish your serialized fiction. So if you've been wondering how to make money while you're writing your book, you're definitely going to want to watch that one because serialized fiction is a way that you can publish as you write, and it's got a lot of benefits for it. So you'll definitely want to check that out when it comes out as well. Now, before I go, I'd love to hear who is going to be participating in Camp NaNoWriMo with me. So hop down in the comments or hit me up in the Byte Writers Guild Discord and let me know if you're participating, what genre you're writing, and what your word count goal is. Because remember, with Camp NaNoWriMo, you don't have to write 50,000 words. You can write 10,000. You can write 5,000. You can write 60,000. So let me know what your word count goal is going to be. And I can't wait to cheer you guys on. Happy writing, and I will see you next time.